Greetings, everybody. Thanks for coming. Can you hear me OK? <laughs> this is probably overkill with the mic. but uh, So thanks for having me. My name is Alex Reichef. I work as a civic hacker. I guess that's a trendy name for it. At MR Kegney, which is a walking, cycling, and transit consultancy based here in Auckland, New Zealand. We also have a branch in Brisbane, Australia. And there I have the privilege of using Python on a daily basis for analyzing and visualizing data, mostly about cities. And one of the tools I often use is GeoPandas. Comes up when we manipulate spatial data. We deal with spatial data a lot. And GeoPandas is my go-to tool for that. And I'd like to introduce you to it through an example. We'll do a little live coding, well, running, live executing of things through a Jupyter notebook. I just want, I think an example is a good way to get a taste for GeoPandas or any software. GeoPandas is at version 0.3.0 now. This is their website. GeoPandas is an open source Python library for manipulating spatial data without a spatial database. So if you have smallish data and you don't need a database or you want to do your stuff in memory, GeoPandas is good for that. Anybody played with pandas before? Pandas, the data table library, great. Anybody play with Shapely before? Just, that's a geometry library, mostly 2D geometry. Put those two together and you get GeoPandas. So basically, you're dealing with tabular data that has an extra geometry column. So you can deal with points, lines, et cetera. Uh, so it combines, GeoPandas aims to combine the, the capabilities of pandas and shapely, shapely, and mostly you deal with geo data frames, as they're called, to interface between multiple geometries in shapely. It's about three years old, this library, that I'm going to introduce to you. Uh, it's pretty mature. There are some performance enhancements that are in the works. It is a little bit slow on some geometric operations. So as an introduction, I'd like to let's work through a little, maybe, it's example, something relevant to Auckland here. We're going to use some open data to answer the following question. Oh, I should say, all this is on GitHub. I just put it on my repo. So you can work through this example if you want and extend it. You all see that all right? This is my question. What are Auckland's crashiest roads? So I'd like to use an open, some open data in GeoPandas to answer this question. The question's kind of vague, which is good, because we get to make it up, kind of uh, make our assumptions as we go. So I'm going to start. So I endeavor to answer this question here. And here's how I propose to do it. First, I'm just going to import a bunch of libraries, one of them being GeoPandas right there. And I'm going to download some data, some open data. One, New Zealand crash data. I'm going to need that from NZTA, New Zealand Transport Authority. Here's the website I'm getting it from, disaggregated crash data. It's got a few years worth of it. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. And also, I'm going to use some Auckland Road geodata from OpenStreetMap. I'm going to get that from MapsN. They have a bunch of metro extracts. You can get it for lots of places, but MapsN has a nice con convenient extract. They do a lot of cities around the world, and Auckland's one of them. And they've got a, a chunk of this, this orange chunk here of geodata that we'll get, some pink one. I'm going to get the um, IPOSM, I-M-P-O-S-M, geojson file. So I actually did that ahead of time. Okay. You can see my data directory there. I downloaded that, the data. And uh, I also cleaned it up a little bit, which I'll do in this, which I'll actually execute in this next cell here. So crash data and road data. Put it together, find crashy roads. That's the idea. So we're, this is, I'm just going to prepare the data a little bit, because the crash data is a lot. I just want to look at the first, last, sorry, the latest five years. So I'll just do that um, in these two cells. Technically, I didn't need to execute this cell here because I already 
did this, but anyway, we'll get the effect. There's some crash metadata too to describe the, the variables, and it's like, it's got some weird Latin one encoding, so I got rid of that there too. Windows. Okay, let's explore the, the data here. So I'm gonna load, first, first bit of GeoPen is here. I'm, the road data, like I said, is a GeoJSON file that's a standard, one of the most popular file types for geographic data. I'll use the read file command from GeoPandas to do that. So I just give it a path. I'm using path objects here from the pathlib library, and GeoPandas doesn't like path objects. They like strings, so I convert it to a string there. So I read that, and this head command, just like pandas, I'm going to print the first five rows of the data. And here you have the data. There's an OSM ID for the row, the type of row, the name, tunnel bridge, other stuff, class, and then this extra geometry column. This is the GeoPandas magic. There's, this is a shapely object, a line string here. And every road has some geometry associated to it. Notice the coordinates here. These are longitude, latitude. That's the standard for GeoJSON. Every GeoJSON file should have that. It, GeoJSON used to allow other projection, other coordinate reference systems, but not anymore. The default is now WGS84 the stuff that comes from GPS satellites. But I don't want to use that coordinate reference system for this work, because for this work, I want to deal with meters farther down in our analysis. And longitude and latitude don't help you deal with meters sensibly. So I'm going to change to a different coordinate reference system here. Anybody got a suggestion? NZTM, the winner, yes. NZTM, uh, New Zealand Transverse Mercator Projection. So this is, all right, the Earth is roughly an ellipsoid, and we're going to just take a patch of it around Auckland and then flatten it out. There's infinite ways to do that. They all introduce distortion, but for our purposes, the least distort, distortionate, distortive method to do that is to use the NZTM projection. So I'll convert those longitudes and latitudes into meters on the ground, easting and northern. And that's super easy with GeoPandas. We use this 2CRS command, coordinate reference system, CRS. I def they're defined in dictionaries, so if you just, by default, if you read it in, read in a file, it'll put it in WGS84. It won't sense what, I mean, a GeoJSON file, that is, which is what we read. Here's my definition of NZTM by its EPS. G code, which you can look up. And yes. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is the issue. This is cartography 101, and it's an issue that you definitely have to get through with geospatial data. So we need to convert uh, GPS data or WGS84 reference system of where you're 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 describing a point on Earth by two angles, longitude and latitude basically from roughly the center of the Earth. And so those are angular measurements, and when I want to convert them, I want to convert that to a map on the ground. So I want to convert that into a 2D a flat plane, X and Y plane, where the units are meters instead of angular measurements. This is important when you do geospatial analysis, especially when you have to deal with distances. Always convert to the relevant projection coordinate reference system for your analysis and make sure all your data is in that one system. For New Zealand, NZTM is the preferred coordinate reference system that you should uh, project to. I'm not gonna get, I'll just say that much about projections. It's a, there's a whole bunch of math behind it of just like trying to flatten out the sphere. It's impossible to do without distortion. You just imagine taking an orange and peeling it and flattening it out. You're gonna distort it somehow either angles or distances. Um, but NZTM is the best we have around here. Um, and that's the coordinate reference system I'll use so that whenever you, the units you'll see will be in meters. So I'm gonna execute that command, 2CRS. And I just put a print out here. The current CRS was WGS94. The new one we converted to is NZTM. Now look at the coordinates. 
much different. Those are meters now. Meters with respect to some origin. I don't know where it is, actually. I should have looked that up. I'm not sure where they put the origin of NZTM, where in New Zealand they put it. But we are, uh, this is like, uh, what, um, 1.7 million meters one way. This is easting and northing, easting and then northing and a few million the other way. OK. GeoPandas also has a simple interface into matplotlib. So I'm going to plot the roads here using the plot command. So again, roads is my variable I'm storing as it. That's my geodata frame name, roads. I plotted it out, and I colored it by column type, which in this case is like category of road, primary, secondary, et cetera. So there's kind of a, a funky picture of the roads we're dealing with here. I should say they are generalized roads. That is, the, the resolution is, I wrote it down up here. Was it 20 meters? Do, do, do. 20, uh, 50 meter tolerance, the resolution. So these, these roads will not be bang on where they should be. That's something for further exploration. I'll put it at the end. OK. We have our roads data as a geo data frame in NZTM coordinates. Great. Next, let's reload the crash data. This is, if I load it up, I'm just using pandas here. It's a CSV file. I'm reading it in with the pandas command read CSV. Here's what the first bit of it looks like. Uh, I'm taking the head, I'm put, giving the first five rows, but I'm transposing it so you can see all the columns here. This is the data. Crash year, crash financial year, crash severity, fatality count, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of things. Was it dark? Yes, dark. The weather? Lots of things in this crash data. In particular, you see it here. We have easting and northing. Those, that indicates that we're dealing with NZTM coordinates in here. But this is not a geo data frame yet. This is just a data frame with pandas. So I'm going to convert this now. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm going to do a little filtering. I only want to talk about Auckland here. This is for all of New Zealand, this crash data. So let's filter some of that out here. Just these are some pandas commands. I'm just going to take the region and just, just the rows that, where the region contains the word Auckland in it. And also, there's some funny things where you have negative northing or negative easting, which is clearly like a data problem, because those things should be positive in this uh, setup. So I'll just filter this out. And now we just have the Auckland data frame. Oh, by the way, that crash sev thing uh, from the metadata, crash sev is the, the severity of a crash. Possible values are F for fatal, S for serious, M for minor, N for non-injury. Okay. Is that important to know what you mean by the northing and the easting, or is it just It's not going to be relevant in this case, but it just means the X and Y coordinates, and uh, sort of X is easting, we'll see how far east and west you are, how far north and south you are. So now we're on, we're on some flat map, just like you would see on a piece of paper. The important thing for us is that all the units are measured in meters here. And this is good. Feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions along the way. OK, so I want to convert this data frame into a geo data frame. So I want to do some geospatial calculations here. So I can do that uh, by creating my own geometry column. Remember this data, if you saw here, I pointed out it has a northing and easting column already. It has the geospatial data in there. It's just not formatted as we like. So these crashes are points. There's a certain x and y coordinate. So I'm going to turn the geometry on. I'm going to create a geometry column. I'm going to do this by using, I imported the shapely.geometry module as sg. So I'm going to create a point out of each of, out of those two columns, the easting x, y, and northing, sorry, easting x and northing y coordinates. I'll create a point out of them. 
I'll create a whole list of points for all of them. And I'm using the geopandas command, ge create a geo data frame from F, which was a data frame. The coordinate reference system is NZTM, which is what we want, which is what we put the roads in. And the geometry is the geometry column I just created. I do that. And we're looking at transpose here again, just so we can see all the columns. And look, we have an extra column now. That's the geometry column from GeoPandas. It's a point. The roads were line strings. These crashes are points, point geometries, both in the same coordinate reference system. Again, if you're ever doing geospatial analysis, make sure your coordinate reference systems are the same for all your data sets, or else it, it'll be meaningless what you do. Ah, uh, well, for, so you've, um, GeoPandas will do, will give you a warning for some things, that they're not in the same coordinate reference system. So that's good. <laughs> that's, that's some check on what you're doing. But the, the, the GeoPandas just thinks it's numbers. So if you see a point and the coordinates are 174 comma negative 37 versus 5 million <laughs> and <laughs> 2 million, <laughs> then there's, there's not going to be any intersections between the two. You're just going to get a nonsense answer. You're probably where there should be an intersection. It won't be an intersection. There should be overlaps. There won't be. So just a warning for that, the first rule of spatial analysis. I just made that up, but it's important. And let's just double check that by plotting that we're sensible here. I plot the crashes on the roads. Again, I'm just using the geopandas plot command, which is really matplotlib running in the background here. Crashes in red for blood. <laughs> now, I shouldn't joke about that. But here we see that, yes, we're in the same coordinate reference system. Makes sense. It's pretty crashy around the isthmus. Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> so these are not necessarily uh, what? What are data issues here? So we, we could be missing some roads in our data set. We have, uh, some of our roads are generalized. Oh, I'm told not to point like that. Some of the, I mean, this is probably not really a straight line because some of them are, are, the resolution is low 50 meters. Um, I haven't dug into it, but I'm guessing these are just small roads that aren't in our data set over here. Always good to do some visual checks on your data, if you can. OK, so let's address our question here. I said, the question was, what are the crashiest roads in Auckland? I, well, what do you mean by that? I, this, is, I, this is my proposal. Tell me if you think it's reasonable. I'm going to look for every crash, for, sorry, for every road, technically every way in OSM data, I'm going to get the assigned to it the crashes within five meters of that road. Because as you see, some of the dots you know, are not quite on the road. They're really close to the road. What if it's a footpath, if a pedestrian got injured or something? There, there's some fuzz in there. So for every way, I'm going to take all the crashes within five meters of it and assign it to that way, that road. OK, I should say there's a difference between ways and roads in OpenStreetMap data, going back here. To the OpenStreetMap data. There's an OSM ID, and then there's a name. You can't see it, but there's a lot of repeated names. Like Simon Street, for instance, has several sections. Those are the ways, and they have different OSM IDs. So my first cut of this, I'm going to look at the sections of the road, not what we would call a road, but the ways, the, the snippets, the OSM IDs. And that's what I'm proposing here as, this, as our first go at answering this question. Take all, for each way, take all, look at all the crashes within five meters of that way and assign it to that road segment. Then you'll, that'll give you a count, a crash count for each road segment. That's, that's the first step. We at least want to know how many crashes are on each segment. So I'll do that. And in doing so, introduce this concept of a spatial join. This is where the magic happens. Oh, sorry. Yes, I'll do this. Spatial join. GPDS join. So 
If you played with pandas or tabular data, you know you can merge two tables together on a common key or common keys. This is the geospatial equivalent, a spatial join. Instead, uh, we're going to merge two tables instead on a common key on something geometrically meaningful. And in, the default is intersection. So I take one table, R, R, which is our roads table, and the other table crashes, and I'm going to intersect them. That is, I'm going to find all the roads that intersect with the dots, all the line strings that intersect with the dots. Well, not quite, because I said I want, to take, I want to take the dots that are within five meters of the road, not just the ones that are directly on the road. So I'm going to perform another geometric op operation first. I'm going to take the crashes data, and I'm going to buffer it each point by five meters. So now each point is blown up into a blob. And now, if a blob intersects a road, that means that that point is within five meters of the road. So that's what I'm doing in the cell. Buffer the crashes, intersect them with the, spatially join them with the roads. Spatial join is usually an expensive operation. And this is where geopandas can benefit from some speed ups. For instance, if you use QGIS, QGIS would do this faster than, well, I don't know about in this small example, but definitely when it gets bigger, QGIS can do it faster. What's going on under the hood? There's, there's a library called Rtree, which creates a spatial index to do these fast queries. So you're not, you're not going through a for loop and saying, here's a road for every crash in the world. You know, in my data set, is this by five meters? Is it, does it intersect this one? Does it intersect that one? No, you can, if you use a spatial index, you can narrow your search down and just pick the ones that are nearby, in a sense, to investigate for actual intersection. So I did that, and what results is the roads that intersect the crashes, and this is the, I just, I noticed I took down the, I chopped down the crash table to just the geometry and the severity of the crash. So this is what remains over here. And the index right refers to the index of the crash table, just in case you want to go back to the crash table and see what's up. So you'll, you'll have roads with multiple intersections. Let's see right here. Nielsen Street has an OSM ID with a crash. And here it appears again with another crash, a different crash. Yes. So this is, now you can raise a methodological objection. You're like, wait a second. What if there's a crash that's near, by an intersection, you know, within five meters of every road? Now you're counting it. You're, double, you're counting it for every road. Yes. You can argue with that. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's bad. That's a methodological thing. But yes, one crash can count to multiple roads now. So we have this big geodata frame of roads with their crashes on them. Now I want to assign a crash score to each road so I can compare the roads. I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to use the number of crashes per meter of road. I could just use the number of crashes. That's a fine metric. But I want to illustrate another geopandas feature, so I'm going to say, Let's use the number of crashes per meter. <laughs> okay, somehow normalize for the length of the road because if the road is really long, you know, you shouldn't be comparing a super long road with a super short one, which is the number of crashes. Let's, let's normalize somehow. So, first, I'm going to aggregate the counts. So, I'm going to use this data frame up here. It's got roads repeated, one for every hit. You got the road coming up again and again in the, road, in the rows. I want to group by the road and then just sum up the counts, the crash counts. So now I'll have a table of roads and their crash counts. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just doing a, a, a group by the OSM ID. This is a pandas operation. And I'm going to sum the crashes, take the first name, and take the first geometry. And <laughs> this is something that I don't like about you. Pandas. When I, sometimes when you perform group by operations, you lose the geometry 
table. Or not the table, sorry, you lose the, the coordinate reference system. I think this is a, a feature that GeoPandas needs to work out. So let me execute this, see what happens here. So this is my, this is my little kludge here to put the coordinate reference system back into the geodata frame. The geodata frame, which was F, became a data frame after my group by operation by pandas. So I lost the geo nature of it. So I was like, ah, that sucks. Let's put it back in. So I had to recast as a geodata frame. And this part here, I'm going to add a new column to G, the length of the road. And I perform, GeoPandas has all the shapely geometry commands that you can do. So anything in the geometry column, you can perform a sh shapely operation on it. One of them is length, which makes sense for a line string, which is a road. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm saying compute the length of the road. Now set a crash score, the number of crashes divided by the length. And now sort by crash score, highest to lowest. And I'll save it to a file for posterity. I'll get back to that saving file for a moment, but let's look at the table. Messy road, crashiest of them all, according to our metric here. So what we see is OSM ID, the name, the number of crashes, 44. This is in the last five years, last five years. The geometry, the length of the road, pretty short, five meters or so, and the crash score, which is quite a, high above these, these other ones. I'll plot that in a moment. Let me just go back to the saving a file, another GeoPandas command. I wish they, if you want to save to a shape file, there's just, there's just, you just write to something.shape and, and it works. But with GeoJSON, for some reason, you have to, the save file command doesn't work nicely with GeoJSON, another weirdness of GeoPandas. So I have to open a file and write to JSON. So what you see over here is one, like I said, GeoJSON coordinates must be in WGS84 according to the spec. So I'm converting back to the coordinate reference system, longitudes and latitudes. And here, this is the GeoPandas command to JSON. I'm dumping, I'm converting the table into JSON. It'll be GeoJSON. And so it'll have the point coordinates in it as well. And here I'm just writing to a file. I'll save that for later. And here are our roads. The crashiest road is Mass Road. Interesting. Let's see where that is. So tables are nice, but humans are visual creatures. Let's draw this a bit. I want to color code the roads by the crash score. I'm going to use this library called Spectra. It just makes coordinated. Uh, manipulating color scales a little easier, kind of like D D3. I don't know if you do JavaScript, D3 color scales are brilliant. This is the closest thing I could find in Python. It's a spectral library. Uh, so I'm going to choose a spectral color theme, which I, some colors that I got from Color Brewer. And I'm going to make some cutoffs based on quantiles. So I'm not going to color code by the score per se, but the the quantile of the score, where it fits in the distribution of scores. And I'll make some marks from 0 to 25th percent, the 25th percent quantile, 50th, 75th, 98th, and 100th. So I'm, if it's really red, it's really bad. And I'm going to do this in LCH color space as an aside. That's what you should do when you make maps. Use LCH color space. <laughs> because apparently that's the best for if you want to create a, a gradient that humans perceive as most different across a color space, you should use LCH rather than RGB or something else. That's something from, what do you call that? Psycho, psycho something, visualization. There's a whole science behind that, color theory. Okay. And here are the quantiles, by the way, of the crash scores, or I mean a summary of the crash scores. You can see our crash scores are mostly pretty low, except there's this crazy one. I mean, there's some crazy ones, Massey Road and others up there. Let's put it on a map. I'm going to use another library for this. We, we saw, you saw the plot with GeoPandas map plot lib. 
interface up there, my, the plots that I've been using so far. That's pretty good for a quick look, but I want to pan and zoom and into the roads. So I'm going to use Folium for that, which is a Python library that wraps the leaflet JavaScript library. Around it. So I'll plot that out. I'm going to style based on the colors that I had set up there. And I'm zooming. The center of the map is the crashiest road. I, I did that up here. It's at the longitude line two or the center. And Massey Road, what we're dealing with is this little section over here. <laughs> That's the crashiest section of Auckland. <laughs> What's going on there? Has anybody been that way? See new? Is there anything particularly strange about that intersection? Uh -huh. So that's sensible. That could be dangerous there. Let's zoom out and look at the red bits. Ooh, lots of red bits around the CVD as well. So again, we're assigning these crash scores to the little sections of road. You might want to do something else and assign it to the entire road instead of the sections of road so that you can talk about not just section number, but the name of the road, the whole road itself. So that's our crash map. The crashiest road seems to be Massey. And the second, what was the second runner up? The runner up was Mayoro Street, and followed by Massey Road again. And then Simon Street is probably, might, you might have guessed around there. Oh, that's the length in meters. The length of the section of road we're dealing with. So Massey Road. Yes. So this is not Massey Road, as you know it. Massey Road is the name of the entire road. But the OSM ID, the section of the road we're looking at, is only five meters. So it's five meters of Massey Road seems to be the crashiest, according to our metric here. But look, Massey Road appears again. But that's a different section of Massey Road, a 7.8 meter section of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you might want to refine our, our analysis here. So I want to do a starter to introduce our basic GeoPandas concepts here. But here's some ideas for further exploration. You can use better resolution roads, because if you look, some of these roads you know, they're not following the base map. The roads aren't great resolution, 50 meters. You could do the analysis instead on the road name rather than the section of road, the road ID. You could, how could you do that? You could, you could dissolve the roads into one. So you could group by, there's a dissolve command in GeoPandas to, to put all the roads together. Yes. That's you got to be careful of that. So if you dissolve, but to dissolve, yes, actually that will be a problem. So if you have multiple queen streets, they'll be dissolved into the same multi-line string, and so you'll be getting scores from both sections, which you don't want. So you got to be you got to be more careful. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And another thing we could do, we could just choose a totally different metric. You know, you could do that. You should consider severity, for instance. It might be an objection. Look, come on, a death, a fatality is worse than a non-injury. You should be factoring that into your crashy score. Meter. Number of cra So yes. Yes. Yeah, so we counted, we counted, we assigned all the crashes to the sections of road, and then we normalized, we divided the number of crashes by the length of the road. And that's what, that was our crash score. But then the road Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Ah, yeah. So you, you can take advantage of that. Mm, mm hmm. That would help with that. And you could you could also say, uh, forget crashes roads. Why don't you just look at the cluster of crashes instead and, and make a heat map instead and talk about crashiest areas instead of crashiest roads. Yeah, do you have a question? So I put that in the ideas for further exploration. I want you, if you want, and if you feel inspired, you can take this notebook and extend it in the ways we're talking about. Yes? Um, just one suggested metric would be the lethality of crashes, how many lethal crashes out of total crashes. Yep, could do that too. So forget the non-injuries or the non-serious Ones not, just not, forget, not forget them, but they use them as that as the baseline number of crashes, the, the total crashes, right? Because some mm -hmm. some places the, would be more dangerous for crashes than others. So the crash is more likely to be like coming off a motorway yeah. <clears throat> onto an intersection. You're more likely to be lethal if you're coming to a T intersection than if you're in a low speed area. So you might have right. So you're saying weight weight by severity somehow. Yeah, so the, the, the lethality of the crashes that occur there. Mm -hmm. Pick and point. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That raises also some sticky questions like, mm, how much worse is a fatality from a serious injury? Like, uh, depends. <laughs> oh, the so number of fatalities divided by number of crashes or something like that. Mm -hmm. So how would you um, do this to convert this to a heat map? Because then you're not just dealing with, like when you start overlaying a bunch of crashes all in the same thing, how would you weight that spatially so that you mm. can see that as a hot area? Yes, that's a good question. So GeoPandas does not have a like, heat map function for you, but there are other libraries that do do that. And I'm trying to think of the first. Does, I'm trying to think of which one does. Does SciPy have something like that? Because when I made heat maps, I've done it with, with some JavaScript. I mean, I don't use heat maps that much. So GeoPandas, that's a good point, though, to bring up that GeoPandas mostly just covers the core of spatial operations, like reading file I.O., like reading files and stuff, converting coordinate reference systems, uh, buffering points, or computing lengths and areas, spatial joins, overlays. Like if I overlay two things, I want to find out like the, the unions or the intersections of those overlays. So basic GIS operations. It doesn't include anything fancy like heat maps. That's the stuff you either have to do yourself or use another library to do. So that, I think that's intentional too. That was their aim to start out just with a, a basic core of operations. But the heat map, if anybody does do a heat map, I, I'd say issue a merge request. You know, I'll put that in because I'm curious to see what that looks like. I wanted to do a road stuff, so I wanted to bring in some space to bring in the spatial join operation just to illustrate that. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> time. Time, like time of day. Time of day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like a time series view of the crashes. That would also be good. Well, yep. I mean, it, it takes people taking longer to get home. So, it, so looking at the, the time of the crash, so the, I'll just repeat for the record the, the mm -hmm. crashiest time, but also if traffic's getting worse and people are taking longer to get home, does that affect the, the timing of crashes and the, the lethality of the crash and the frequency of crashes? Ah, right. How does the background traffic fit into that? Yeah, that's a good question. Tough data to get, though. Not open data. There's no, or open, I should say, open, as an aside, open traffic data is a new project. There's not a lot of it yet, but it's coming. Most of it's proprietary, like Google Maps. They're, you know, the red, the yellow, the green. They don't tell you what red is. You know, they just say <laughs> it takes a long time. How long? <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's an aside. Thanks, though. Any other 
questions you have about GeoPandas? Cool. Well, I hope that was a meaningful introduction and you can appreciate some of the pros and cons of using GeoPandas in your project if you have one. And thanks again for your time.